Hey yo guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back into Juno Balls, I hope everybody's doing well on this Saturday, it is international break, and uh, we are suffering out here, we are suffering out here, I would rather suffer watching Manchester United play, than suffer with no, with no club football, man, I really do love club football, I really do love watching it every weekend, and uh, even, even on... Uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights, I just, for me club football is it, uh, European football is it, and um, I just I just have love for Manchester United, so it sucks that they're not playing, I mean, there is international games on, but it's not the same, and it's not the same. Anyway, there is much, much talk in this international break about Jean-Claude Blanc um, being the new uh, CEO at Manchester United, as everybody knows, Richard Arnold has basically been fired, stepped down, uh, if you want to paint the picture. He's no longer going to be here, he's in a transitional period and um, I think end of December he's gone. I just need to double check that but you know, the end of December is basically wiping his hands off of Manchester United after more than a decade at the club and John Cole Blanc is coming in. Somebody with a I had no idea about this guy before he came in, man. And doing my research, I am really, really, really impressed with him. Um, and hopefully, you guys will also be impressed afterwards. I mean, it's, yeah, I just, I just hope that he's allowed. Before we get into the video, uh, it's a few things. I just hope that he's allowed to do what he needs to do, and the Glazers don't get too much involved um, because I personally do think just doing the research I personally think this guy can can steer the club in the right direction and the, not not what's happening on the football pitch let's uh let's just park that for a moment because obviously um he, he obviously kind of has a hand there but in terms of the club and what this guy's done um I think he's the man I think he is the man, and I hope that a lot is left in. Um, so, I have it all written down on a page, and uh, we'll just go through it, man. So, Jean-Claude Blanc, uh, he was born in 1963 in Cam Camper. Uh, I'm pretty sure the French have a, a way of saying it. Um, so, my bad to the French people, uh, I don't mean to disrespect your, your city, um, but Camber um, is where he was born in 1963. Um, he done a degree in international business and marketing um, from Skemba, um, which is a business school out in France, and then he done his MBA at Harvard Business School. This man has an MBA from Harvard, which is recognized as one of the best universities in the world, guys. That's crazy. Um, so, he's basically been on the managing side of, or, or the business side of, um, of sporting projects for the past two decades, for the past 20 years. Um, so, from 1987 to 1992, he was the sales manager, marketing director, and he was the manager of the opening and closing ceremonies of the Al Albertville Olympics. Ah, the strange name when I was on saying it right. <laughs> Albertville Olympics uh, was the, I think it was the 1992 Olympics that was held in France. So he was in charge of the sales um, and um, sales and marketing and he was also in charge of um, the opening and closing ceremony so that's where he started I mean that's a big job that's a big job to start with your career which is absolutely mad absolutely mad after that he that that's after that that's when he went to, to Harvard um, to get his MBA and then uh, for about two years and then in 1994 to 2000 um, he was the CEO of the this 
management. A more sporting organization. I think it's a more. A more sporting organization. Um, so a more sporting organization is a branch of a media company that operates basically all the big sporting um, or, or not operates but yeah they, they, they operate all the big sporting um, events in France so the Tour de France the Tour de France um, the, the Paris Dakar um, race uh, the Paris Marathon so like all the all those sporting events from racing to uh, cycling to running um, they are kind of in charge of the media side of all this um, and the branding side of all these events so that's a massive job man it's a massive job so it was there from 1994 to 2000 um, and then I mean I don't know if it was there for the end of 2000 but from 2001 in 2006, he was nominated as CEO of Prince of the French Tennis Association. So he, he basically, yeah, he basically took over the French Tennis Association in full, where he basically managed all the tennis tournaments. He managed France tennis and all the tennis tournaments. That's also like a massive job, man. None of these jobs on you from the beginning of his career. I mean, he starts out managing the Olympics. He, he starts out managing, like, not, not the whole Olympics, but like the sales and marketing and um, the ceremonies, the opening and close ceremonies of the Olympics. That, I don't think that's a small job in any way, shape, or form. And then, and then the next thing is, is managing, like, all these prestige sports events that you always hear about. The Tour de France, I mean, I've never watched it, but you hear about it, like, you used to hear about him more in the past, but you see, maybe that's because he was there. Maybe because he was doing the, the marketing um, to the team. You don't hear about it so much nowadays, but like the Tour de France, the Dakar, and the Paris Marathon. I think the Tour de France, in my eyes, is the biggest out of those, but obviously I, I would prefer to watch the Dakar. I mean, it, it's a rally race. Um, but in terms of just, if, if you don't watch any of those, everybody, everybody's heard about the Tour de France. I mean, such a, a massive cycling event. And then, and then he gets nominated for, for the, for the French tennis. And he oversees all of it. He, he, he basically, he's the CEO. He oversees all of it, guys. All of it. And the Roland Garros, uh, Garros um, I mean, I don't watch tennis that much. It was a time when I used to watch tennis, but that's that's like second to Wimbledon. That's a massive event. That's second to Wimbledon. You also oversee the Paris Master Series and the Davis Cup. Um, I'm not sure about the other two, but the, the Roland Garros, I mean, that's, that's a big event, man. That's a big event. So this guy was doing big things from, from a young age. Um, and then, as Manchester United fans. This is where I go back to the beginning of the video where I say I, I just hope this guy gets to do what he needs to do without anybody getting in his way. Seriously. He takes over Juventus or he becomes a board member of Juventus in uh, 2006. So this is the worst the worst part in, in Juventus in Juventus club history. This is the worst period and he basically becomes a board member and in this period, 2006, the, they got uh, relegated to Serie B um, during the, how do you pronounce this, the Calciopoli scandal. <laughs> Guys, my apologies for my pronunciation. Um, so yeah, so this is a whole scandal going on basically between um, higher ups in, in big clubs and Juventus is one of them and they basically get relegated out of the Serie A um, and obviously this is this is like a massive deal because this messes clubs up I mean obviously when 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 things like this happen on this scale these sponsors that want to pull out of the club um, players that want to leave the club I mean just think about it it's a massive, massive deal, and it is also 
expected to be the worst, the worst period in Juventus is Holy See. In their Holy See, this is the worst period, and he basically joined the board the, in in this period, 2006. Um, and basically, what he does is he he basically uh, I don't want to say he does it alone, but he is part of the team. Um, that rebuilds the team and the technical staff. So it's a fallen club, and he's a main player. He's a main player in building the rebuilding the actual team and the technical staff, staff coaching, um, medical scouts. He, this guy is in charge of all of that, man. He's in charge of all of that in one of, if not the biggest club in Italy. Um, he renegotiates the business deals. Like I said guys, like if any big scandal goes on at the club, there's going to, there's going to be brands that's not gonna be one of the, that's not gonna wanna be associated with that club anymore. So he needs to renegotiate all these deals. Um, and obviously I mean when you relegate it, you, you see it in the Premier League all the time. When you relegate it, players leave the finances are in, you, you're not bringing in the same revenue um, because you basically in a lower league. Um, players players want to leave um, contracts, negotiations, all that stuff. So he needs to renegotiate all that, and in doing so, in 2006, he basically um, brings the club's finances up to a healthy position, which initially it wasn't because. They basically got thrown out of the league. They got thrown out. They got chucked out, man. Um, it affects you, and it affects you financially massively. It affects you financially massively. That's why, I mean, that's why teams, that's why teams that come up into the Premier League, they can, they, you'll see a lot of them all of a sudden start spending money because it's just more money when you're in the bigger league, when you're in the Premier League, when you're in the Serie A. You just get more money, man. More revenue, more TV rights, etc. And um, yeah, he has to deal with losing all of that. And he basically um, he, he stabilizes it. Um, they don't make a profit that season. 2006, they don't make a profit. I don't think they make a profit 2007 either. But they break even. And he was a massive part. He was a massive part in at least allowing the club to, to not like to still be around today to still be around today imagine they were taking loss after loss I mean you look at we boss is and they're having to do mad stuff to stay around man they're having to do mad stuff to stay around and this guy basically he, he does it better than boss are doing it at this very moment in time although boss is not facing as much um, adversity I mean they're still in in uh, in La Liga, so yeah, and then um, so during this period, so they in the 2006 they in Serie B, and um, 2007 um, after the after the whole club went through the maddest period in the club's history. 2007 they get promoted again into the Serie A, and then they finish third in 2008 and second in 2009, and this is all this is all done. While there's like no finances at the club, they're like breaking even for like, I think it was two to three years. They are just breaking even and this guy is a major player in uh, making sure that that happens, man. So, if you, if you just think about that, if you just think about that, um, before we go deeper, I mean, I want him, I want him, like... Manchester United needs proper leadership. Manchester United needs proper leadership, man. And just reading this, I'm basically reading out this guy's CV and I am absolutely impressed. In that period, um, or at, not in that period, but um, once, once he stabilizes the club, he goes on to reconstruct the Juventus Arena, the stadium. And um, with that, he bowls a 35, a uh, thousand square meter more um, to help bring revenue into the club and unfortunately guys unfortunately we have the glazers 
Um, that's constantly taking money out of our club. I mean, we can't even rebuild our stadium. And John claude Blanc, with the club's money, goes on to bowl them all so that, so that there's even more revenue coming into the club. I mean, we, we just need the Glazers gone. We need this guy in charge. Glazers gone. Ineos, 100% ownership. And, um, yeah, I, honestly, I, I honestly hope that um, Ineos and uh, Sir Jim can, can just get rid of the Glazers, man. I mean, this, this, um, Jean-Claude Blanc was, he was building a mall. Um, and I don't think that Manchester United is going to be able to get to that point if the Glazers are constantly going to stack out dividends. I mean, they just took out 650 million. 650 million. What? That's so much money. Why do they need that much money? They bought the club on debt. They bought the club on debt. They've never put a cent in. They've never put a cent in of their own fees. They've never done it, guys. And they're just taking out 600 million. That's besides from putting people in place that haven't run the club right for many years. I mean, Ed Woodward. He is probably the worst CEO of any club in the <laughs> Okay, we have... Well, Mike Ashley was the owner. Mike Ashley wasn't the CEO. So Ed Woodward can be up the at least top three worst CEOs any club has ever seen. In terms of the football side, in terms of the financial and marketing side, Ed Woodward was... He, he done some bits. I mean, that Adidas deal was massive. But just in terms of running a football club, he was he was in the mud. It was so poor, man. So I just hope that Jean Claude Van can do what he needs to do without too much intervention from the Glazers. Um, and let's just hope that these steps that's been put in place by Ineos, um, that they can get us to where Liverpool is, where Arsenal is, where City is. Um, Manchester United is a massive club. We are a massive club. The only we are club in debt at the moment, so debt needs to be cleared. Stadium needs to be repaired. Um, Carrington needs to be upgraded 100%. Stadium needs to be never mind repaired. It needs to be upgraded. That is where we need investment. But as soon as those stuff is sorted out, Manchester United can run on its own. We've seen it for so many years. We've seen it for so many years. Um, just go back five years. Manchester United without investment for over the past 10 years without any external investment Manchester United have been making the fees man we've been making the fees buying spending massive uh, money on players in the past decade Manchester United has spent more than a billion more than a billion on players man and that's just of revenue that the club makes that's just of revenue that the club makes so we need to get this this um the snakes out of the club the glazes and uh point the, the correct people you know if, if the glazes had just appointed the correct people i think the club would have been in a better standing and um and and yeah i just think the club would have been in a better position the, the fans might not have been so much on the case. I know that the fans have been on the case. In my personal opinion, they haven't been on, on the Glazers' uh, backs enough. But if you're winning on the pitch, yes, there was protest when we were winning. But I think it, it, they can kind of hide behind that. But because they haven't put the correct people in place, they've been taking money out, the stadium is rotting, blah, blah, blah. All this, all, the list goes on. They, they kind of made their own bed, man. They kind of made their own bed and everybody wants him out. And I just hope that Sir Jim, Sir Jim can do it, man. I really do. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys, hopefully. Um, I don't know if I'll make a video before, uh, before, before international break is over, but... Hopefully I, I have some content for you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.